Thank you for tuning in to the Also Archives. Again, uh, this video will be my second episode about my Red Sea Egypt dive trip. And this one will be about my favorite wreck dive so far on the Salem Express. So in honor of this video, I am wearing my Heaven Saphir sweatshirt, which I purchased when I was on my live aboard in Egypt. So um, just to give you all a little Fun fact of this video. So next, I'll just share a little bit of history about the ship itself, what it was used for, just to give you a little bit more context. The Salem Express was built in the late 1900s and was originally built in France, but once it was put in service, it was generally used as a passenger ferry to transport vehicles and people to and from various places in the Middle East. So the Salem Express was a very, very large vessel. It was about 300 feet long and had capacity to transport upwards of 1,000 passengers at one time. On one occasion, the Salem Express was returning to Egypt after a holy pilgrimage to Mecca. And unfortunately, a storm hit and through the storm, as the captain is trying to navigate the waters, the ship hit a coral reef and unfortunately sunk within uh, 20 minutes max. And from what people can gather after doing excavations and things of the ship after it sunk, only about 180 to 200 people actually survived. But there were upwards of, it's believed to be that there were upwards of 1,000 plus people that were on this ship returning on that pilgrimage. So estimates are, you know, hundreds of people lost their lives as a result of that, um, that wreck. When our dive masters were originally talking to us about the dive, giving us the briefing of what to expect, how deep we're going to go, you know, all the, the facts about in the history behind it, um, our dive master actually said, you know, I've been diving for years. I was young when this, when this wreck actually happened. And to this day, I refuse to dive this wreck and I've never been in the water in this surrounding area. So of course the tourists love to dive the site and um, get an appreciation for the magnitude of what happened on this tragedy. But for Egyptians and the Egyptian culture, this was something that was extremely, extremely tragic and a, a extreme loss of life. So to them, uh, the site is deemed as sacred and it's actually been named as a, um, as a burial site for Egypt because there were bodies that they unfortunately could not remove from the vessel, which were either, you know, buried too deep or to get them out would have been way too dangerous. So um, to this day, you cannot remove anything from the ship. Everything is as it stands and it's illegal to even, um, you know, to take any artifacts or anything that are that are there as part of that um, burial site. To me, what made this wreck dive in particular super special was um, the fact that it was a fully intact wreck. So in most cases, when, when you do a wreck dive of a shipwreck, it'll be broken into pieces or the pieces will be scattered and you really, really can't make out too much of what the, the entire ship looked like when it was you know, sailing on, on the water. So for this one, you could almost picture it being active and being up on the surface and, and carrying people just because it's fully intact. And the way that it sunk, it, it sunk on its side. So it's resting in the sand, kind of flipped over on its side like this. So um, 
the top of the boat is now on the side of the boat. And it sat, I think, at a depth of around 105, 110 feet in the sand. So it's way, way deep and it's a huge vessel. And you can just look up through the water column and you can just see the, the ship as far as you can look up and, and across, just absolutely beautiful. So once we got down there, uh, it was it was fascinating. There were toilet seats, there were mess plates, you know, cafeteria plates, which people would use to, you know, gather their food at the lunchroom. There were, um, you know, ropes that I guess they would use that maybe held the life rafts or things like that. Um, I saw, I believe it was a telephone. It might have been some sort of fire extinguisher or something, but I'm going to say it's a, it looks like a telephone to me. Um, you can be the judge of it. I'll post a picture here. Um, I also saw a, um, a, what looked like a refrigerator as well. So just all kinds of, of, of things from normal life that just really makes you get a better understanding of what these people must have gone through. You know, they're doing their daily activities. They're with family, maybe eating dinner or asleep. And um, when when something like this happens, it, it just had to be a frightening thing for them to have to go through. But to be able to see those bits and pieces of life still there underwater, it, it was um, breathtaking. There were even several buoys or little small boats that um, were probably used in emergencies or deployed out when the ship began to sink. But because it sunk so quickly, uh, a lot of the, sh the the little life raft boats were unable to be used. So there were several of those that were also submerged next to the ship. And just in the surrounding sand, it's tons of debris and what looked like to be wood planks or aluminum planks and just all kinds of, of stuff. And of course, the wreck is now completely covered in coral. So all kinds of colors, purple, blue, yellow, orange, you name it, is all little clusters white of beautiful coral that was um, now growing and living on this reef. And then with coral comes fish. So a little, like a lot of little baby fish and all kinds of colors. I'm sure there were octopus there, stingrays, eels, you know, swimming in and out the crevices of the ship. And, um, it was just beautiful to see that um, the ocean, how quick the ocean really embraces something like that and almost in a way makes it beautiful with all the colors and all the life that has now found its place in this new home. When we finished our dive and made our ascent, we were almost um, somber and a little you know, everybody was really quiet and we just kind of really absorbed everything that we had just experienced and, um, and seen in the water just because of the, the history behind it and knowing that, you know, there could potentially be um, victims who were passengers that are still, you know, stuck in their rooms that are barricaded in places that they couldn't get out, get out of. Um, you know, knowing that there's remains that are still there underwater and it's been years since then, it was just, um, just like a really sad experience, but I'm glad I did it. And I'm glad I have a different perspective on, um, respecting dive sites, respecting, um, you know, respecting things like that when you come across them, because, a lot of people, you know, you go diving and you think of it as just being fun and just like, oh, hey, you know, willy nilly, I'm just going to go and dive and see the fish and stuff. But um, when you actually have a story behind what you're looking at, I think it makes it just that much more meaningful and that much more special. So um, if anybody's ever in Egypt and you're diving, I would highly suggest um, asking about the Salem Express shipwreck and um, just just. Just hop in and just see what it's about if you have the chance. If not, um, at least you have my video and you can um, 
you know, hopefully I've given you a good perspective about what it was like down there, the emotions behind it. And um, through the videos, hopefully you can kind of like swim with me through that experience. But again, thank you all so much. I appreciate you taking the time to check out my videos. If you haven't checked on the previous diving videos, I've made a playlist now about my, my um, scuba diving adventure. So please check that out. And um, I have a couple more special dives I would like to share with you all. So I'll be posting those um, soon. And please, please check out my other videos about um, medicine and being a pre-med. A lot of good things coming up in the works. So please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. 